family. Um, we miss you guys. We really wish we could be back in church. Um, we're doing really good. We got married two weeks ago. And last weekend, you guys all saw Rose got baptized. She's it's a little past her bedtime. She's a little crazy this tonight. But life has just been a little crazy for us, but we're making it through. We hope you guys enjoy church. Will you join me in the call to worship? Come, all who are thirsty, says Jesus our Lord. Come, all who are weak, taste the living water that I shall give. Dip your hands in the stream and refresh body and soul. Drink from it. Depend on it. For this water will never run dry. Come, all who are thirsty, says Jesus, our Lord. Let us worship together. Our first hymn today is hymn number 280, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, in the Presbyterian Hymnal. We come now to a time of confession, a time of turning our hearts toward the ways in which we need our Savior the most. We pray this prayer together because we're in this together. We are called together. We need help together. And the Lord God hears us in our struggle. And even when we fear to admit it, God listens. So take the time to read the prayer of confession to yourself so that when we pray together, it can be more your own. And if you're joining us via the radio today, take this time to silently consider the things that you feel are holding you back in your relationship to God. If you would pray with me. The words we speak all too often do not show you in our lives, God of our pilgrimage. We spend so much time boasting to others, they imagine that we have no need of you. We grumble impatiently when you don't respond immediately to our requests, but are slow to sing your praises. We mutter under our breath about the behavior of those around us, when we could be asking them if there is some way we could serve them. 
It is on our journey to the cross and the tomb that you fill us with the riches of your mercy, steadfast love. You do so not because of anything we have done, but because of the compassion that flows from your heart, wounded by our failings. As we open our lives to receive your forgiveness, may we turn to the light which brings us life, following Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, every step of the way. Amen. As we confess our sins, we are also greeted with an assurance of pardon. So today, hear yours. How much does God love us? Enough to send the divine heart, hope, and spirit to us. Not to condemn us, but to save us. Not by speaking or doing, but by God's good and precious grace, we are saved. Thanks be to God. Amen. We come now to a time of the children's song, so I'd like to invite forward the kids to uh, get into a good place where they can see me, or if you're listening on the radio, where they can hear me really well. Today we're going to sing um, a song that I used to sing all the time. It's a song that meant a lot to me when I was growing up, and uh, I remember my mother singing it to me, I remember singing it in church, I remember singing it all the time, and it's a beautiful song. But I'm going to sing through it twice, and hopefully the first time you can listen and try to join around, and the second time you can just sing along and make this song sing in your own heart. I've got a river of life flowing out of me, helps the lame to walk and the blind to see, opens prison doors, sets those captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, O well, into my soul. Spring up, O well, and make me whole. Spring up, O well, and give to me that life abundantly. Were you listening? All right, try to sing it along with me this time. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Helps the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets those captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well. Into my soul, spring up, O well, and make me whole. Spring up, O well, and give to me that life abundantly. Oh, that was so good. That's one of my favorite songs, and I hope that you enjoyed it too. Go ahead and find us on our website or YouTube or um, on Facebook, and you can uh, watch this song as many times as you want until you feel you've got it down, or you can just uh, laugh at me and make fun of the funny little motions that I do. (laughs) All right, peace be with you. Hey there, kids. You stay right where you're at because we're going to just go right on into the children's message for today. The children's message is talking about um, being able to get through tough times, tough times, whether it's a small inconvenience or something that is reshaping your entire life. You never know when you're going through it, how big it is. Sometimes things seem pretty big at the time and end up being small, but it doesn't matter because whatever it is, you're struggling. It's hard to get through. Um, You know, how many of you started at a new school this year? How many of you went back to school this year, but it doesn't seem anything like you remember? I bet, I bet that's most of us. Whatever the case may be, maybe you're having a fight with your siblings, maybe your parents are being unreasonable, whatever the case may be, we go through these times where we struggle and things are hard and we just do not like it. And as we're going through those times, it's important to remember that God is with us 
each and every step of the way. That doesn't mean that God did this thing to you, that you are being beat up and God's okay with it. That means that God knows that you're struggling and cares so much that you're struggling that God is going to send some help. God is going to send some help right away. Now, it may not seem like right away because the struggle will last for a while, but if you pay very close attention when you're struggling, there are things like your pastor, your teachers, your parents, your friends, your siblings, all sorts of people who are around you who are going to ask you things over and over again like, are you okay? Do you want to talk about it? You know what? I just want you to know that I love you. And all of these things as they happen are people who were sent by God to help you. So when you're struggling, when you feel like you have a lot of pain in your heart and you don't know what to do with it, that's okay. It's okay to be hurt. But also know that you're not by yourself. That God knows that you're having a difficult time and God is going to send someone or something to remind you that God is right there by your side. And that is a pretty cool thing to remember. And that makes it so that when I'm feeling sad, at least I know that God loves me. And that helps no matter what I'm going through. Peace be with you, and I hope that you can see God showing you signs of his love today. Alrighty, today's uh, scripture reading comes from Numbers 21. Chapter 4 through 9, or verses 4 through 9, sorry. Um, then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road of, to the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey, and they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness, they complained. There is nothing to eat here, and nothing to drink, and we hate this horrible manna. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, Make a replica of a poison snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and was healed. Hey, a big thank you to Taylor and Sam and Rose Soli uh, for greeting us to worship this morning, but also reading our scripture passage for today. The scripture passage for today is a challenging one because it is a very Old Testament passage speaking to a modern audience who have a great amount of experience of the ancient Greek slash Roman world. So most of our understanding of Christianity comes from the New Testament, which comes way after this passage is written and the people who experienced it and knew it are long, long gone. So we're looking at this passage through multiple lenses, and that can create... Um, misunderstandings in the approach and an odd feeling in how it lands. So Moses is leading the Hebrew people through the desert, through the wilderness, after having freed them from the captivity of the Egyptians. And God has been providing for the people in their time in the desert with uh, manna from heaven and so they have daily sustenance and are greeted daily by the blessings of God in an extremely tangible way. And yet they've been in the desert for quite a while and their patience gives out. It's too hard. And, 
you know, before we come down on the Hebrews a little too harshly, consider what you are seeing in the passage. These are an entire people traveling with entire families, young and old alike, going through dealing with the trials and pains of being a nomadic people, traveling through an inhospitable land, and they haven't been told when it's going to end, and they're not even particularly told exactly where they're going, somewhere not Egypt. And they get upset by this. They're frustrated by this. We can understand that. We can understand what it means to have that kind of um, anguish and pain and kind of societal pressure on what's going on uh, because we're going through it right now. Now, I wouldn't say that we're traveling through a wilderness, and I would say that for the most part our needs are still being met, and we're still fairly affluent when it comes to comparisons around the rest of the world. But we are recognizing a pressure, a, um, an anxiety that seems to be on pretty much everybody, no matter what political affiliation, no matter how much money you make, all those things, you still are running into people on what we might call their worst day. You know, you have a passing conversation with somebody uh, pre-COVID, and they kind of snap at you. And then later through other conversations, you figure out that they were having a bad day. You give them a pass. You're like, okay, that was mean. I'm going to like it if they would to apologize, but I get it. You're having a really bad day. You're not thinking through your responses. You're, you're kind of brusque. You're, you don't have a lot of patience for things. I get it. Only now everybody is in that pot and everybody is on that tense kind of fractured zone where we are ready to explode in a lot of different ways for a lot of different reasons but the culminating reason the source reason is the same so we get it we get what it would be like for an entire people to cry out i've had enough of this and we are, in fact, doing that in many different ways. Again, depending on who you are and what you're going through, you're, you're screaming out, I've had enough of this, will sound slightly different, but it's the same scream. So we begin to understand that the Hebrews, when they're going through this time, traveling through the desert, they're being shown daily blessings from God, and they've had enough, so they start to complain. They start to say mean things about God, about Moses. Does Moses even know where he's leading us to? Does this situation, is this ever going to end? Are we just going to die out here in the desert? And they, in their living memory, were freed from captivity and the Red Sea was parted. They're given their daily blessings. They should know better. And here's the thing about that is I think they do. But it doesn't change the amount of anxiety, fear, trepidation, whatever the case, whatever word you want to put on it, it doesn't change the amount of that that's on them on a daily, hourly level. And so I think maybe in previous years we would have come down a little harshly on the Hebrews saying, look around and look how all the things you do have. Maybe we understand a little bit better now that sometimes it's really hard to see the things you do have. Second point. The people complain and they start to speak ill about God and about Moses, about leadership, what it is that they're going through. And the scripture tells us that God sent snakes. Now this is the particularly difficult part for us in our modern New Testament framework of understanding, but this would have broke no comment back then. This is your God. This is the God. God is in charge. 
There are no debates about God's existence. There are no debates about God's abilities. There are no debates about what you should or shouldn't say about God back then. Gods were gods, people were people, and they just understood that. There was no philosophy involved. And so when God sees this ill coming about, God sends us the snakes. And the writer who wrote this passage would definitely understand that that was an appropriate and realistic response. And through our philosophy and more modern times and more um, human um, understanding, our, our sense of individual, our sense of human rights and understanding, that chafes us a little bit. But how it exactly happened doesn't change the fact that it offers up an image that is still true to this day, that God is justice. God is the one who brings punishment, the one who reckons responsibility, the one who is in charge of those things. There are places all throughout Scripture that talk about how judgment doesn't belong to us, it belongs to God. And so the people in the desert, the recipients of all these blessings who speak ill about God and about his servant who is leading them through, they are punished. They are punished. And although that might be difficult for us to grapple with and to understand, there is the basic truth element in that passage which speaks about how we are responsible for what we say, and it will be paid with justice in the end. God will make sure of that. That's a surety. That's part of who God is. The reason why the New Testament story turns out differently isn't because justice didn't happen. Isn't because the price wasn't paid. Jesus paid that price for us. God doesn't come to a decision that God loves us and says, oh, well, time to toss responsibility and justice aside. That's not what happens. Jesus takes on the price that we couldn't have possibly paid ourselves because it was way too high, and justice is served still. The debt is paid still. So God is sinned against, the snakes are sent, and then the people cry out to Moses saying, help us, talk to God, find us a way out of this. And God relents. These are the people who have been saved when they called out to God for help in their captivity, please God help us, God does help them, and then it seems like each and every step along the way of helping them, they complain and yell and rally and protest against what God is doing in their lives. And God, full of justice and might and authority, sends a punishment upon them for doing those things. And then Moses says, I know they did these things, but please, can you help us? And God relents. You see, we have sinned against God. And it would be an easy Bible lesson for me to tell you today that I know the situation is bad, that I know that COVID is pushing you, that I know that you may have lost your job. I know that your job may be 20 times more difficult now than it was. I know that um, the world is on fire. I know, I know all this. And it would be easy for me to tell you the scripture lesson today is... God is still with you. God is still giving you blessings. Look at all the good things in your life and get over it. That would be a perfectly applicable lesson. But the real lesson is that God still loves us. God is still in love with the human race despite all of the barbs and darts and arrows and swords that we have thrown at his heart. 
God still loves you, despite the fact that you have called him out, despite the fact that you have said, where are you? Despite the fact that all the blessings that we have received day in and day out, there is a time, I'm guessing, in the last 24 hours, if not the last hour, where you have looked up to the heavens and said, what is this? And God is looking down on you saying, I'm trying to help you. (laughs) God still loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've come from, and for all those seeking reprieve, for all those who are looking for help, God still answers and that is something that we can take with us out into the world because other people need to know that God loves them that God will provide for them that God will act on their behalf sending saints and doing miracles along the way so Don't ever think that the pain of your heart is stupid or pointless or not of consequence. I don't care how big or how small it is. It's you and you're going through something and immediately God cares. But also don't think that you're alone in it. That God's not saddened by what's going on in your life. That God isn't hurt himself because of what you're going through. And his love for you is pouring out compassion and wants to let you know how much he loves you in that moment. Take that with you. Hold it secure on your chest like a security blanket. And each and every chance you get, tell the others... I know it's hard. I know it seems impossible. But God is with us. And one of my favorite sayings, if God is with us, well, who could possibly be against us? Amen. We come now to a time of giving our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings to God. When we do this, we have an opportunity to give what we have worked so hard to make as an offering back to God so that things like the kingdom of God, things like our brothers and sisters in our church and our community, and other things like God's will can be done. God has empowered us to be the hands and feet for what God is doing in this world. So I encourage you during this time to think very carefully about what you have to offer. What do you have to give? It might be money. Money is very important. It heats the building during the winter time. It provides food for those who cannot provide for themselves. It gives help and sustenance to people in their times of need. Money is great. Time is another thing that's great. Right now the church is gearing up getting back into the fall and trying to recreate a lot of what church is doing and what it is about. So giving up your time to serve on a committee, to give out food at the food pantry, to find ways that you can serve your church and your community is also important. But don't forget your gifts, your gifts, your ability to sing, your love of poetry, your ability to spot the fallacies in Star Wars lore. I don't care what it is. All of these things can be offered to the church to create moments of mission and fellowship. So take a moment and consider what you have and whatever is most precious, whatever is the thing you worked hardest to get, whatever the thing is in your life that you are proud of, I invite you to consider giving it to God. Not getting rid of it, giving it to God so that God will use it for the glory of God's kingdom. We have so much, and it's because God has provided so much. So let us do likewise and give some back.
Amen. We come now to a time of prayer, a time of lifting our hearts before the Lord, of sharing our concerns and the concerns of our community, of sharing our joys and the things that we have been blessed with. We do this out loud and to each other, giving praise to God boldly and gratefully. So I invite you now to join me in prayer and to lift up your heart before the Lord. Heavenly Father, when we feel we have lost direction as a people, or even just as a person, help us to remember your presence on these our wilderness journeys. The day of the Lord is coming, and he abounds in steadfast love. Great Deliverer, your steadfast love and your wonderful works have spared us of troubles known and unknown for you are in love with us. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Holy Spirit, help us to remember the great work that Christ accomplished for us, which no other person could perform. Help us to confess with gladness, by grace we have been saved. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Lord Jesus Christ, gift of mercy from God the Father, you love us even when we are the most unlovable, lost and afraid. Thank you for this grace. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Lord Jesus Christ, lifted up on the cross like a serpent in the wilderness, lift up our eyes to see you as our Lord and Savior loving God's whole world. The day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. We bring before you those whom you love with special needs, known to us as family and friends. We lift them up to you, knowing that you are the vehicle of grace, knowing that you are the only way that we can be saved, knowing that you are with us, no matter what we have gone through. Lord God, hear the names of those we lift up to you right now. Lord, we know that you have heard those names, and we thank you so much for what you have done. Now continue to show your work in our life so that we might better believe and know that you are our God and we are your people. For the day of the Lord is coming. He abounds in steadfast love. Though we remember that we are dust and to dust we shall return, we remember that we are your precious dust. May we remember this as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is hymn number 339 in the Presbyterian hymnal, Be Thou My Vision.
want to thank you so much for joining us for worship today. It has been a blessing to be able to uh, guide through worship and just to lift up the name of the Lord on this day. I hope that you feel blessed. I hope that you feel encouraged and ready to experience God more. But if you are leaving with doubts in your heart, don't feel bad. Know that God remains by your side and receive now this blessing for the upcoming week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the broad expanse of God's love and the abundance of his riches and glory shape your perspective on what your own life needs, including the things that disappoint you. May the eyes of your heart be open to all the blessings which surround you, May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this season, but day after day, from early morning watch until you retire for the night. May your prayers reflect gratitude while also acknowledging the needs of others whose situations are drastically different from our own. May thoughts of Jesus fill your mind and hunger for God drive your soul, and love for the Lord guide your speech and your actions. And finally, may the grace, peace, and love of our triune God protect, defend, and empower you to run with perseverance for the race marked out before you. Amen. God bless and peace. God be with you.